Let us give confession of faith, Jesus is to Christ, the Son of the living God. Let us greet each other. The love of Christ is, um, is absolute love. It's so today's message is titled Time to Love One Another. French philosopher John Jacques Rousseau explained humans this way. When we are 10, we live a life driven by sweets by a lover in our 20s, by pleasure in our 30s, by ambition in our 40s, and by greed in our 50s. While living a life like this, humans are nothing but scarecrows. This expression may be a bit awkward these days because we realize things faster and live longer. However, this expression gives us that if our life loses sight of its essence and lives tied to the introduction, so why do people face destruction and despair? The reason is because they're tied to their introduction. And they put their all in the introduction. My greed, my ambition, my things, my success. Everything is based on the Genesis 3 problems. And that's how people live their lives. If you live the life of introduction, the main content is the spiritual content. It's the Word of God. So, so if you're tied to the introduction, it is nothing more than a scarecrow's life. So scarecrows do not have lives. Have you ever heard the expression, what is so important? So it was a line from a movie, and it impacted people so much that the expression became a catchphrase. It became a social buzzword as a satirical term for focusing on unimportant things while neglecting what is really important. And this expression is used when talking about not losing sight of the essence and making your priorities in life clear. To put it simply, you need to come to your senses, break away from the life tied to the introduction, and live a life of the main subject. In my view, this expression gives a very important message to our spiritual lives. It would be a good to repeat this when we are in a situation of choice or have to decide what is it. When you hear this expression, don't the words of Matthew 6.33 come into mind? But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. When you hold on to the main subject, all the things in the introductory introduction will follow you. When a life of seeking God's kingdom and God's righteousness comes first, so the kingdom of God, God's church, the position that were given by God, the fields that were given by God, so when we live a life of seeking God's kingdom and God's righteousness, the rest will naturally fall into place. The health problems, the success, the financial problems, the children problem, and you will experience additional grace. 
And I've personally experienced this myself. My family, my children, I just, I laid them before God and I told God, you do whatever you want to do because you have called me and I'm walking on that path. So without any calculations, without any thoughts, I just followed the word of God. Did I fail? We look at the words of First John every week. And they give us answers as to what kind of life we should live as children of God. In particular, Apostle John takes a gospel approach to the concept of love through the words of 1 John. Today's passage gives the message, love one another. So after the PD notes, um, God has given me such a difficult and hard situations. And we just follow the scripture and that's how I come to the titles of the Sunday message. But then God is guiding me such in such detail and He's guiding me so perfectly according to His time schedule. And what we need in our church right now is we must love each other. We must be in despair and destruction, but we must love one another, and that's our time schedule for our church. So I didn't choose the scripture, and I'm just following the order, but it says on the scripture to love one another. So this is our time schedule to love one another. Because children, must live a life where loving one another becomes their spiritual priority. No matter how great of a faith, walk of faith you have, if you talk behind other people, then that's not doing the walk of faith correctly. That's not the biblical walk of faith. Dr. Francis Schaeffer, a famous Christian thinker, also emphasizes in his book the sign of a Christian that the sign that represents a Christian is not a cross or a fish sign but he says it's rather love he continues to say that it's love the sign of a Christian is not that you go to church or you're elder but then it's love so you, we can feel this when we meet other people that, oh, this person really trusts me. This person really respects me. Or this person really loves me. That this person has a lot of love. Or that person does not have any love. It's, they're scary. I don't want to meet them. You feel it. So the sign of a Christian is not a cross, but it's rather it's love. So we there is now one month left in 2024. As you have lived this year, is there any part of the relationships in your life that has not been restored? As the title of today's message suggests, please hold on to the fact that now is the time to love one another. It's a time to love one another. This is God's voice and this is the word of God. You must hold on to this. So may all of you listen to the word of God. If your relationship is strained, I hope you approach it first with the love of Christ. There's no excuses. Just approach them first with the love of God. You must apologize first. It doesn't matter if you actually made a mistake or not, but if they feel uncomfortable because of you, then you can say, I, I apologize for that. 
In fact, in a broken relationship, one party must bow down first to find a clue to the solution. I hope you will do your part. Those who lower themselves are those who will ultimately be exalted. And that's how you can be comfortable and peace. And it's the same for the family. Same for the couples. So if the relationship between the couples become worse, then their children will be affected by it. So you must come to senses quickly and you must apologize and forgive each other. So you mustn't say that, let's see who dies first. So if you're really sharpening your sword, that's pointing towards each other. Will that bring happiness? No. Through this passage, may you clearly hold on to the fact that now is a time for us to love one another. And I bless you in the name of the Lord that there may be evidence of change and growth where families are restored and our unity becomes one. Point number one, the message that is heard from the beginning. John 3, 11 reads, For this is a message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. What the Apostle John consistently says in 1 John is love one another. In fact, love is a message that Jesus taught himself. And at the same time, a message that he himself put into practice. He put it into practice. So he shed, he shed all of his blood and water. And he showed himself, showed to us how much he loved us. In Matthew 22, 34 to 40, the Sadducees asked Jesus what the greatest commandment in the law is. At this time, Jesus answered like this, And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is a great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In the word, love of God and love of neighbors is the core of God's word. You say, Oh, Pastor, I cannot love my mother-in-law because she really gave me a hard time. But then you must love her. It doesn't say in the Bible that we exclude your mother-in-law or we exclude your husband, we exclude your son. It says love of God and love of families and neighbors. And that's the core of God's word. In reality, Jesus healed countless sick people while, car while carrying out his public ministry and embraced and restored the wounds of souls who were isolated in the society of the time. And he put the greatest love into practice through the atonement on the cross. That is why it is natural for us as children of God to love one another and it is said that this is the news we have heard from the beginning. The news from the beginning refers to the gospel. From the moment you hear the gospel and believe in Jesus, you begin to hear about love. Here, the news is called Angelia in Greek. This word is only used in this epistle and refers to the exhort exhortation of love delivered by the apostles. 
예수 사랑을 가진 자, 예수님을 통해 사랑을 받은 자는 Loving one another is, a, is the embodiment of the gospel. Those who have the life of Jesus are bound to actually practice the love of Jesus. Those who have the love of Jesus will not talk behind other people's back because God is watching and God is listening. Because that person is not there to talk be behind their back, is that really the person of Holy Spirit? So you have no choice but to put into practice the love of Jesus Christ. However, people often misunderstand this concept. They tend to view the practice of Jesus' love from a purely humanistic perspective, equating it with philanthropy. philanthropy. However, the essence of Jesus' love differs from that of philanthropy. The root of philanthropy is human-centered. So philanthropy has become an important deal, ideal in volunteering where people often emphasize service and charity as essential. For example, you go to the orphanage, you go to help those who need help, and that's what the Catholic, Catholics and Buddhists do a lot. But it's completely unrelated to salvation. Of course, these actions are not inherently bad. However, they should not take over the essence of Christian love. What is the essence of Christian love according to the Bible? It is to save souls. To save souls. All religion is based on the flesh. But then Christian love is not the same. It's the love to love souls. The cross, the cross symbolizes the highest expression of love that Jesus showed. The ultimate purpose of the sacrificial love demonstrated on the cross was to save powerless humans who, deceived by Satan, had turned away from God and fallen into sin. So, I was given a report that someone who was in this shaman industry came to church today, attended the worship. And this person was evangelized by our church's own um, shaman ministry team. And in order to save those souls, so do you think Satan will give you something good? No. Satan deceives you so that your whole family and your whole life comes to destruction. We must recognize what takes priority. The Israelites failed repeatedly after the Exodus. So they had Exodus after 430 years in slavery. During their time in the wilderness, and even after entering the promised land of Canaan, they had they had continuous fail. They had continuous failure because they did not understand the essential message. Why? 
even after being taken captive, colonized, and living a wandering life, they did not recognize it. To this day, they remain trapped in a legalistic and religious practice, missing the core of the gospel. Even to this day, they're still having this war, so they're not able to realize. So they're living a very hard life because they did not understand the fundamentals. Without understanding the fundamentals, they have greatly misunderstood the gospel. I pray that all members of Yeon Church may firmly grasp the whole core of Christian love and the gospel message. Let's read verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. So, First John, uh, John three sixteen. You're like familiar with John 3.16 however many are less familiar with 1 John 3.16 1 John 3.16 by this we know love that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our life for the brothers these two verses are closely related not just because they share a similar chapter and verse number, but because 1 John 3.16 is the application of John 3.16. If God had only spoken about His love for the world, it would not have had the same profound impact on our hearts. But through the death of His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, He allowed us to experience that love firsthand. He showed us a living example. Therefore, it is a natural for us who have experienced Jesus' love to live according to His command and love others in the same way. A question was posted on the pastor's personal Twitter account. Pastor, is suicide truly a sin? If so, is it also a sin to pray asking God to take me? The short question reveals the deep wounds pain and despair the person asking is facing. So, he's a Christian and if he commits suicide, he can't because he thinks it's a sin. So, he's asking, what if I pray to God to take me faster? And that also is a sin. So he's asking this kind of question. So imagine how much despair this person is facing. In the world around us, even though many do not speak up, there are countless souls struggling in various competitive environments and relationships. We must open our spiritual eyes and see them. We must become vessels who embrace them with the love of Christ. We must guide them so that they too can taste the gospel we have experienced and are enjoying. This is a true expression of a life filled with the life of Jesus. I bless all members of Yeoman Church, wherever you are, wherever, whatever you do. May you be transformed by the gospel of the cross you first heard and become evangelists who restore life. Point number two, a love of deed and truth. Verse 18 reads, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. The Apostle John emphasizes that we should, not, we should love not just with words or speech, but in action and in truth. 
In other words, our love must be practical. Unbelievers often criticize Christians by saying, Christians only live by their words. They're good with their words. Only by their words. So only their mouth is moving. That means they're not practicing in their actual life. Or in heaven, there will be no hands or feet, only mouths floating around. So Christians, they listen to a lot of words of God and they're very good with their words. And our remnants, if they are really raised well in the church, then there will be summits. This criticism arises because many Christians love with their words but fail to demonstrate it through their actions. In truth, lip service cannot have a real impact. We need to ask ourselves, do I have spiritual influence over my neighbors, the people in my life? Do I have spiritual influence over the people that I meet? So am I really affecting them spiritually? So the one word that I say can spiritually influence the person. Spiritual influence is not simply conveyed through words. It is when we practice love that others respond. This is why love indeed and truth are so important. In John 13, 35, Jesus said, By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. One of the key marks of being a disciple of Jesus is loving one another. So you must be different than the non-believers. The non-believers will know that you are the true disciple of Christ. So because of the love of Christ, I gave him my time, I gave them my energy, I gave them my possessions. So when you think about it, it's a waste of your time, it's a waste of your energy and waste of your money. But then God will, God will fill you up. I have not a single soul that I hate in in the, in the earth because I know myself so well. So that person can be like that. I understand. So what do you not understand? So that person can be like that in their shoes. Why can't you think in other people's shoes? It's a practical love. One of the key marks of being a disciple of Jesus is loving one another. It's love. Without love, you're just an empty can. Apostle John elaborates on what kind of spiritual benefit we can have by practicing the love of Jesus Christ realistically through today's passage. Verse 19, 
By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before Him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and He knows everything. Amen. Not only by words and tongue, but when practicing the love of Jesus with a sincere heart, we shall know that we are not of the truth and reassure our heart before Him. In a word, practicing brings reassurance and allows us to taste the blessing of spiritual growth. When you receive this message and apply it in your life, you will experience growth. You will experience growth. When you apply it in your life, you will experience growth. Same for evangelism. Don't just keep it in mind when you go out to the field and face it head on. You'll find the answer. When you realistically preach the gospel, you'll face people reacting in all sorts. Some accept and others fiercely reject or interrupt. Through such experience, you will have spiritual growth. You may feel embarrassed, it might hurt your pride, but then you will have the spiritual growth. Going out to the field, you will have the assurance that you are the child of God whose stature, statue and whose status and authority have been re recovered. And because you, f you feel like you don't have anything, that's why you're jealous, that's why you envy people. But then, in you, it's filled with God's love. So who do you envy? Who do you think is greater than you? That, that's you being deceived. So may all of you have the assurance. Verse 21, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. Apostle Paul, Apostle John explains our attitude of prayer transforms when we practice the love of Christ. Simply thinking, when children get good grades from school, they stand before their parents in confidence. So they're confident if they have straight A's. But when it's, when it's the opposite, they keep trying to avoid you in unknown anxiety. So, I never had good grades, so I was always afraid. So my brother, he, he used to go to Seoul a lot, and when he comes back at home and I have received my grades, then I always had to check if my brother is back at home because I didn't want to see him. I didn't want him to know. Because whenever I see him, he always tells me, give me your report card. Give me, bring me your report card. And he, he goes, because he was rank number, he was the top, top one at his school. But then we are the last in rank in our class. So whenever the report card comes out, we're always so scared. Likewise, people who witness Jesus Christ in life and practice the love of Jesus are different when they pray. Their prayer holds on to the covenant. 
They pray in confidence, crying out desperately for miserable souls dying in the field and not receiving the gospel even after preaching to them. So imagine how confident they will be. So instead of crying for yourself, because your spiritual report card is always not looking good. So starting today, may all of our Yewon church members come before God confidently. Verse 23, and this is His commandment, that we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as He has commanded us. Whoever keeps His commandments abides in Him, and God in Him. And by this, we know that He abides in us by the Spirit whom He has given us. Here it is emphasized that the one who practices the love of Jesus Christ dives into deeper fellowship with God. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. I am in God and God's in me. When we practice his love, it makes us realize his heart. as though we understand the feelings of our parents who raised us after having a child ourselves, we get to enjoy the blessing of deeper fellowship by realizing His heart. Above all, the passage reveals that the Holy Spirit guides us in practicing the love of Jesus on the cross. We can't make it last with our power and strength. It's only the Holy God, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot leapfrog behind, beyond ourselves in countless situations. That is why the feeling of the Holy Spirit is important. The feeling of the Holy Spirit is not to feel overwhelmed. So without the Holy Spirit, we cannot go beyond ourselves. Feeling the Holy Spirit is so important and it's not being filled with your own feelings. Enjoying the correct gospel is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled with His Word. Putting my thoughts and standards aside and being filled with by His Word is the filling of the Holy Spirit. That is why the puppet is crucial and applying the puppet through the flow of the Word is important. May all Yewon believers make the early church disciples' life pattern of Word, prayer, and evangelism your own. By doing so, I bless you in the name of God to all become witnesses of practical love, enlarging the tent of spiritual and physical life. Conclusion, two Christian young adults went on a journey together. One had bread, but only helped himself without even offering to share. So the other one asked for some, but he did not budge. The young man got upset and thought of something clever to say and said, You are Christian and don't you know his word to love your neighbors as yourself? The one eating bread alone answered, It is also said in the Bible that you shall not convert anything that is your neighbor's. We often collect collectively abide by God's words according to our understanding and interest, according to my taste, according to my standard, and according to my level. The same applies to loving each other. How common is it for us to love when it seems beneficial? and uninterested if not. 
The love demonstrated by God through Jesus Christ is agape love. It is an unconditional love bound by nothing. Our love must resemble His. So even love your enemies if they slap you on the left, left side, then turn your right side. But it's a word of God, so you must obey this. Apostle John concludes in 1 John 4.11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. God loved a sinner like me, and He gave me the salvation. So can I not love other people? I must love other people. God has forgiven me, and He loved me, so I can also forgive others. We also ought to love one another. I bless all families of our Yewon unity in the name of the Lord to practice worthy love for each other and have evidence of exerting the good influence of the gospel. Let us pray. Dear Father God, all of our Yewon church members have a lot of scars and problems, and they have their wounds and pain, but then may they be, fi may they be healed with the love of God and may they go beyond themselves but love their neighbors and love one another. And may we not serve Satan but serve the Holy Spirit. And may we enjoy this love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.